Welcome to my presentation with the topic Geographic Information System Tailored Risk Minimizing Measures for Optimizing the Health Situation. My name is Melanie Platz and I am Research Assistant at the University of Koblenz-Landau, Campus Landau, Institute of Mathematics. I am working on the usage of mathematical modeling for the mathematical optimization of spatial public health, including the use of adaptive GUI design for digital devices tailored to different user groups for early warning and decision support. This presentation is divided into four sections. The problem area, the methodology, results and conclusion and prospects. Problem area. In radiation, ecotoxicology and epidemiology, we have invisible risks. A person who is located in a risk area needs support to get out of this risk area, possibly unscattered. Therefore, we deal with the question, how can risk be made visible for a person located in a risk area and how can early warning and spatial decision support be provided to this person. Methodology As already mentioned, one problem is the invisibility of risk. Thus, the risk has to be made visible for a person located in a risk situation and early warning and spatial decision support has to be provided to this person. Risk can be visualized with a risk map. Here we can see an exemplary risk map. A risk map assigns a risk to a geographic location. This visualization can be used by decision makers like public health risk managers and resource allocators to determine an intervention like resource distribution or early warning for persons located in high risk areas. In the application for a person in a set of situation, this could look as shown here. Through the camera of the digital device, the landscape is colored dependent to the risk in the location of the user. Here we have high risk, marked with red. A first step to optimize the health situation is to create risk awareness. On this basis, early warning and spatial decision support can be provided to a person located in a set of situation. Certain information about the user, like the geolocation, enables to provide early warning and spatial decision support adjusted to the user's needs. If a user requests the grade of risk at a geolocation in which she or he is located, tailored information about the risk is provided to the user. A low-cost solution for creating risk awareness and to provide early warning and decision support makes sense when trying to enable the usage of the application for a possibly large target group regarding to the socio-economic situation of certain countries. Open source software and open content for providing the application free of charge are suitable. Additionally, open source software can be easily enhanced by local computer scientists to adapt the software to their needs. A possibly large target group is supposed to be reached. This includes illiterates and blind people among others. Those user groups can be included by interchanging media items, for example a phone, like smartphone or cell phone, combined with an open source voice recognition software as auditive user interface. However, it is difficult to assure wide usability of the application and thus improve the health service delivery for many people because cultural and social behavior of people is neither generalizable nor predictable. Nevertheless, through the implementation of a low-cost solution, a potentially large target group may be reached. Results This tutorial has the function to show how own maps can be implemented into the early warning and response tool. 
the eWAS tool can be downloaded at this link. When downloaded, this folder structure is saved on your local computer. First, the functionality of the shell script loopcrop.sh is explained. Then, the selection of an image file as map, the execution of the shell script loopcrop.sh and the procedure of starting the eWAS tool with the new map are allocated. Finally, we come to the data import for risk or resource maps. Functionality of the shell script loopcrop .sh. The variable width defines the width of a pixel in which the image file is fragmented. The variable height defines the height of a pixel in which the image file is fragmented. The variable width map defines the width of the image section that will be used as map within the eWAS tool. The variable height map defines the height of the image section that will be used as map within the eWAS tool. The variable x offset defines the x value of the starting point. The variable y offset defines the y value of the starting point. Therefore, x offset and y offset define the upper left corner of the image section, respectively the upper left image fragment. $1 is the first argument of the shell script. The shell script loopcrop.sh expects the file name of the image that the user wants to be processed by the script. First, the image section is cut out of the original image. The name of the resulting file and the folder the file is supposed to be put in is defined by the variable outfilenamemap. The original image file is converted to the new image section file. With the comment convert and crop, the image is cut and renamed with map.png and saved in the folder map. Then the original image is fragmented. This is done with a loop. The loop is applied on the rows 0 to 29 because the height of a fragment is 10 and the height of the image section generated in the step before is 300 and the columns 0 to 49 because the width of a fragment is 10 and the width of the image section generated in the step before is 500. The name of the resulting file fragments and the folder the files are supposed to be put in is defined by the variable outfilename. The original image file is converted into fragments with the command convert and crop, the image is fragmented into PNG files and each fragment is named with the number of its row and number of its column and saved in the folder map. Choose an image file as map. The image that is supposed to be included is called mapindia.jpg. It is a screenshot of OpenStreetMap. Any image format can be chosen. This image has to be saved in the folder eWAS Images on your local computer. Execute the shell script loopcrop.sh. The shell script loopcrop.sh can be executed in the terminal. First, we have to navigate to the local folder Images. CD opens a folder and LS shows the documents and subfolders contained in a folder. With the command sh loop underline crop dot sh map underline india jpeg and enter the shell script can be applied to our image file mapindia.jpg. Start the eWAS tool with the new map. To start the eWAS tool, the file index.html 
which is located in the eVerse folder on your computer, has to be carried out in the browser, for example Firefox. By clicking on Show Risk, the generated image section is displayed. Data import for risk map or resource maps. Furthermore, if you want to create your own risk map, it is recommended to create risk map data in the spreadsheet program LibreOffice Calc. Use values between 0 and 1 in a 30 times 50 matrix of cells with values. That means column 50 is AX. Mark the content in the 30 times 50 matrix of LibreOffice Calc and copy the values. Paste the copied values into the Load Risk Map Import Interface in EWAS and press Load Risk Map to import data. You will see the risk map immediately visualized in the EWAS tool. The eWars tool is available at the QR code or the link below. Several fatal diseases which are transmitted by mosquitoes, such as malaria, chikungunya or dengue, occur in India. Sri Lanka and India are classic examples of the lack of sustainability of vertically structured prevention, control and elimination programs. Complacency, dwindling financial and political support and a change in strategy from vector control to case finding and drug treatment were mainly responsible for the resurgence of malaria in these countries. One big problem in India is garbage in the streets. It is necessary to eliminate garbage to avoid the development of water puddles as even a small amount of water is enough for the mosquitoes to breed. People should be protected from being bitten by mosquitoes. GIS tailored information, for example in form of a video about the danger posed by the bite of a mosquito and the application of a mosquito net to protect people from mosquito bites, should be provided to the people. Other protection measures could be to apply insect repellent, to keep the windows closed and to eliminate garbage and water puddles. In this way, risk awareness to support risk minimization is supposed to be created. The situation in India was considered. In the following, we will deal with the situation in El Salvador. In El Salvador, end-stage renal disease is the leading cause of hospital death in adults, the second cause of death in men, and the fifth leading cause of death in adults of both sexes in the general population. Pesticides are responsible for the poisoning of a number of inhabitants of developing countries such as El Salvador. There could be as many as 25 million agricultural workers in the developing world suffering an episode of pesticide poisoning each year. Pesticides are poisonous and the exposition of people should be minimized. GIS tailored information, for example in form of a video, about the danger posed by pesticides and how to reduce the risk of chronic kidney disease and the nephrotoxic effect by pesticide exposure reduction, should be provided to the people. Therefore, the agricultural workers have to be made aware of the necessity of protective clothing when applying pesticides. Other protection measures could be to inform about the mixing rules of pesticides or the storage and disposal of pesticide containers. This GIS tailored resource for providing information should be tailored to the local people, local problems and to the local language and so on. Conclusion and Prospects Where are we now? With the visual representation of risk minimizing measures, local risks are intended to be minimized. A low-cost EWAS tool for risk visualization has been developed. Where are we going?
What are the next steps? In the following, a GIS tailored knowledge repository containing resources for generating risk awareness, like videos, text information and so on, has to be created to enable the provision of GIS tailored information adjusted to the needs of the local population and, consequently, to minimize local risks. Thank you for your attention.